Hello, and today we're going to be doing a lab looking at what macromolecules are found in some different food, food substances. Uh, today we're going to be using water, vegetable oil, butter, corn syrup, uh, dextrose solution or sugar solution, uh, and oat milk and Crisco as our test solutions. Uh, we're going to do a total of five different tests. Uh, Benedict's solution test to test for the presence of simple sugars. Uh, iodine tests to ch check for the presence of starch or polysaccharides, uh, Birex uh, solution tests to test for the presence of protein, uh, and then two lipids tests, a Sudan 4 test and a well, it's brown paper towel or brown paper bag test, all to test for lipids there at the end. Uh, so let's go ahead and get rolling. Our first test is our uh, Benedict's test, testing for the presence of simple sugars. Uh, we're going to do that by adding 5 milliliters of the Benedict solution. So the Benedict solution is right here. Uh, to get 5 milliliters, we're just going to put about 2 squirts of the Benedict solution in each one of these test tubes. So 1 and 2. And then repeat that process for the other uh, 6 test tubes in this case. Uh, so now that we have our Benedict solution in each one of our test tubes, uh, now we're going to start with our test samples. Uh, so we're going to just take, if it's a liquid, we're just going to take and put about one squirt. So like the water, I'm just putting one squirt of water in. Vegetable oil, same process. Uh, if it's a solid, I'm just going to put a small sample of that one in. So I'll go ahead and get each one of those samples in, and then we'll catch you after that. So now we have each one of our samples in our test tube with the Benedict solution. I would take, can take over the hot plate uh, and heat up these test tubes for about three to five minutes. Uh, we have each one labeled so we know which one's which uh, once we're finished in the hot water bath. Uh, so we have our hot water bath set up. We're just going to take our test tubes and gently place each one in our hot water bath. And then once they're in there, we'll let them sit for about five minutes. Uh, and then we'll come back and then catch them uh, and see if we have any color change right now. They're all blue. So now that it's been about five minutes, uh, we'll go ahead and remove our samples from uh, the hot water bath. And then take a quick look at what color they change after we let it cool for just a couple minutes. So you can see we clearly have some color change. We'll, uh, we'll let it cool for a couple minutes and then come back and look at it. Uh, but right now we can see water's uh, staying blue. Our vegetable oil also staying blue. Our butter's still blue. Our corn syrup has kind of a deep red color. Our dextrose is a dark red, even almost purple. Our uh, oat milk, uh, you have some orange color change at the top where it is. We'll mix it up and see if it, we have that throughout. And then Crisco stay blue as well. Uh, so that's what we're looking at once we remove them. So now that it's cooled down, uh, we'll take our final look at our uh, Benedict's test, uh, testing for the presence of simple sugars. Uh, so we'll see uh, our water still blue, our oil still blue, our body still blue. Uh, then we get to our corn syrup, it's a darker red appearance. Uh, then we get to our dextrose, it's a really dark red. Our oat milk, after we mix it up, uh, it starts to be an oranges color. And then uh, finally our Crisco stays blue. Uh, so that was your Benedict's test uh, for simple sugars. Uh, if it stays blue, that shows there are no simple sugars present. A uh, change to an orange, red, or green color uh, indicates uh, presence of the simple sugars. The darker that color, then uh, the more sugars present. Uh, so hopefully you got those results. And we'll move on to our next one. Uh, next, we'll set up our well plate so that we can do our next three tests, actually. We have a iodine test, a biomet test, and a sudan test. So I'm first going to start by above each one of these wells, labeling with our test solution. So like above the first one, I'm going to label water. And then above the second one, vegetable oil. I'm going to work my way all the way across with each one of those solutions. Uh, label, and then we'll catch you once we're done there. Uh, 
Uh, and then along the side, uh, we're gonna put each one of our tests to loosen. So on top, I'm just gonna do iodine. Uh, then birets for our protein test. And then on the third one, Sudan. And since we do have seven, I'm gonna put Crisco on the bottom and that's gonna be tested with my three as well. Iodine, Byretz, and Sudan. Uh, so now that we have our uh, wall plate set up, now we have to add each one of our test solutions, each one of our foods, uh, and then we'll catch you after we got those. Uh, so now we'll begin to add our test solution. Uh, we'll start by adding iodine across that top row. Uh, iodine tests for the presence of uh, starches. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put one or two drops in each one. Oops, if we get it on the body. Uh, so with the iodine, we can see uh, whether it's changed color or not. Like our uh, oat milk, we can see that dark uh, black, very obvious presence of starches. Uh, with our uh, corn syrup, you can see kind of a dark brown along with our butter. Uh, with our water, which we know does not have a sample, it's kind of that golden uh, color. S same thing we see uh, with our dextrose solution. Uh, and then like our uh, Crisco and our... Uh, vegetable oil. Uh, so that's our iodine test. So again, uh, record those colors in your data table. And next we'll do our Byretz test. So our next test is our Byretz test, a test for the presence of protein. Uh, again, we'll just work our way across this, this time the second row. Uh, about three to five drops in each one. I can see these first couple are staying a light blue color. We don't have any real color change. And then our last two, we have uh, oat milk. Oat milk's a little tougher to see because of the color, but when you drop it in, you watch closely. We gotta reload. Uh, but when you look at the oat milk, it's hard to see sometimes because it changes color pretty rapidly. Uh, but you can see it changes a dark, uh, almost purple color once we're in there. We can hold it steady. And then our final one is our Crisco down on the bottom. And that also stays that light blue. So on that one, the oat milk changed that purplish color and all the rest pretty much stayed uh, that light blue coloration. Uh, you might see a little darker racing uh, in our butter, not much, uh, but overall they all mostly stayed that light blue other than our oat milk. Uh, then our fourth test is what we call Sudan, uh, Sudan 4. I'm gonna put about two drops in each one. Uh, then we add a little water to it and we'll see what our coloration looks like. So now each one has uh, our Sudan in it. Uh, you can already starting to see uh, what's going on with each one. Uh, so like the water we know does not have any lipids. It stays that uh, light pink color. Uh, and then we start to see this uh, red, darker red appearance in some of them as well. Like our Crisco, our corn syrup, our butter. Uh, we start to see that appearance. Uh, we'll add a little water and see what's So again, Sudan tests for the presence of fats. Uh, we're looking for, again, a color change. So like our uh, water is staying that light pink color, that almost peachy pink, uh, whereas our vegetable oil, we get that dark red. Uh, so as we go across, we can see our butter, our corn syrup, our dextrose, our oat milk, and our Crisco down on the bottom. Uh, so we're looking to see whether it stays that light pink or if it turns to that darker red color uh, with the presence of Sudan. Here's kind of what our final uh, well plate looks like before we clean it out. Uh, you can see all our different test results uh, at this time. It's a little hard to see the protein test or biorets on the uh, oat milk. Other than that, you can see pretty much all our results at this point in time. Uh, so that should help give you your results, your data for those uh, three tests, the iodine, the biorets, and Sudan. 
uh, then we have one last test to work with our paper towels. Uh, for our last test, uh, we're just going to use a brown paper towel. We'll break it up into some sections. Uh, so it's going to have a total of, well, I'm going to have eight because I have seven testing solutions. Uh, and then we're just going to label what we're testing each one with. So like the first one's water and then vegetable oil. And work our way across uh, identifying each item we're testing. Uh, then we're just going to smear each item onto our paper towel here and then let it dry and see whether or not it leaves a stain. So we'll finish this up and then. Uh, so for this test, we're just going to put a small sample of each one. Uh, so just like one or two drops of water, one or two drops of vegetable oil on our paper towel. Uh, and then we're going to let it sit there and dry. If it's a sour like our buddy, we're just going to smear a little bit of it and spread it out. So like our buddy, we're just going to smear on here. And we just want to see whether it leaves a stain or not. So we'll do that for each one of our solutions. Uh, let it sit probably about five minutes or so, just like we did on our uh, Benedex test, and see whether it leaves a stain behind or not. Uh, so with this test, we're looking to see whether or not it leaves like a stain behind. Uh, I think of like a grease stain. Uh, we still got a little more time, but you can see kind of the vegetable oil is definitely leaving that stain. While our water is starting to evaporate, especially if we look along the edges. So we have our water starting to evaporate. Our vegetable oil definitely leaving that stain behind. Our butter uh, appears to be leaving us light stain. Uh, corn syrup doesn't really seem to be leaving much of a stain behind, so no stain on that one. Our dextrose solution looks very similar to what we had with the water, uh, so no stain on that one. Our oat milk looks a lot more similar to our vegetable oil, oh, well, leaving that stain behind, along with our Crisco. Crisco and oat milk uh, share some similarities. Uh, so it looks like a negative test for water, positive test for vegetable oil, positive test on butter, negative on corn syrup, uh, negative on dextrose solution, and then positive on oat milk and positive on Crisco for a lipid test uh, using a brown paper towel uh, for each one of these test solutions. Uh, so hopefully you were able to identify the macromolecules found in these different foods. Uh, if you need to go back and pick up what color change we had in each one of those tests, go right ahead. Uh, we'll get everything cleaned up and you have a great day.